killed it. Okay, so this is the first part of our trip and our really first long ride of the trip. We're riding almost all day to a place called Hotel Nidel. On our way there, we made a stop at a really, really nice lunch restaurant and it was called Tras Lomes. Really cool place really nice service and higher end food. On the road to Tras Lomes, it was lots of turns, lots of canyon riding and tight roads, not very wide, not very much of a shoulder, but we had a really good time kind of just getting to know the bikes on a higher mile day. And we picked the bikes up and San Miguel and we got back. My grandpa needed to put his stuff together. And then an hour later, we met up with one of my grandpa's good friends down there in Mexico. And he, his name's Peter and he's a really cool guy. He's early to mid seventies and he's a uh, retired fireman from the East Coast. So lots of knowledge. And I just have to say, it's so reassuring having somebody along on the ride that knows what they're doing. If worst case somebody wrecks or hey, maybe you're riding along and somebody else you don't even know wrecks. It's nice to have somebody there that can actually help. On our way to go get Peter, we got problems with our communication systems. Me and Ian just could not get it together. And to be honest, my grandpa just kind of took off because he wasn't expecting us to have to fiddle around with our helmets. He's used to just getting on the bike and riding. So we didn't have that opportunity, but it was totally fine. We just went with it. And sure enough, we met up with Peter. And one thing you got to know about Peter is he rides the fastest motorcycle that's street legal. It's the Ducati Pentagali beautiful motorcycle. We're talking an early 70 year old man who just rides that thing like no problem where most people would be shaking in their boots to even sit on it. This is still our first day of riding these bikes and I'm convinced at this point that Bill and Peter are just testing us out, seeing what kind of skills we have and making sure that we can hang with those guys when we get to the hard stuff. So just southwest of San Miguel de Allende, there's a place called Kenyatta de la Virgen. It's a Mayan pyramid. It's about a five mile bus ride with about a one mile walk to get to it, and it is totally worth it. If you're in the San Miguel area, you need to make a, a day trip down here. I'm not sure if you can take a taxi that far or not, but you should figure out a way to get, get there and check it out. It's really cool. Um, you can't bring anything other than your camera or your phone and a water bottle, but I highly recommend you bring both. The water bottle will come in handy on the way back. The day that we were there, it was probably uh, 85, 90 degrees. The walk is, is not flat. It's got some terrain to it. I'd say about 500 feet of elevation that you're walking. So just keep that in mind if you're headed that way. Definitely wear shorts, sunscreen. There's not a lot of shade, but it is well worth it in the end. If I remember correctly, we left at about 11. Uh, by the time the bus got back after the tour, it was about 1.30. So plan on a few hours while you're there. When you get to see the cool pyramid and all of the surrounding site work, it's really cool. We stopped at a place called Smoked and Low. It was a barbecue joint just uh, just to the west of San Miguel. It's a really cool spot, Texas style brisket. I uh, highly recommend that place. If you guys are in the area, go check them out. And I've put a link in the description below.
Here's the last part of our ride to Tras Lomita. It's a time-lapse video and you can see just how much curves and turns there are on the way up there. So after lunch we go and we get to Nidal, it's this really beautiful area. Um, it has a couple of reservoirs on the property, so there's green landscape and instead of just brown dust, they keep the place up with plants and um, it's all natural structures and really just uh, organic and... Um, Everything they cook there is from the area and traditional. One of the really cool attractions of Nidel is when you're there, you stay in shipping containers that they've converted into these little like uh, studio apartments, if you will. Uh, they've got a little shower and a bathroom and two beds, a little refrigerator and a table. Really just all you would need to stay overnight. Uh, they're really cozy clean and nice enough for a couple of guys to stay overnight. Um, on top of the nice accommodations, their food is just spectacular. They cook everything over an open flame, so they're taking sticks of mesquite and feeding the fire and making these really elaborate meals. Um, only thing that I ran into that was a really problem for me is I was grabbing too much food. There's so many different dishes that you just can't try everything if you grab too much. But uh, while we were there, we got to try this rattlesnake tail salts that they make and grasshoppers and all these really cool exotic foods that they make right there. All really delicious. There was any, wasn't really anything I didn't like. Um, they make their own tequila and mascal and they also make craft beer. One thing happened while we were staying the night there, and luckily it happened later in the evening when we were already getting ready for bed, but all of a sudden, boom, the whole whole town goes down. No power, nobody's got power there, and you know, it is what it is. There's nothing you could do about it. You Here in the US, we'd be sitting there thinking, Oh, we should go talk to somebody and, you know, let's get our power back on there. It's not even a thought. It's like, well, these are the conditions we're in. Uh, we're going to deal with it. And that's just the way it is. And, and a lot of the way along the journey, that's just you got to be able to be open to things happening and just be OK with them because there's nothing you can do about it. After sitting in the dark for a while in the room, we noticed there was some flames outside and after the power had gone out, the staff had got together and made a fire underneath one of their structures for people to gather around and have a couple beers and socialize. So there was still a social aspect and 
fun to be had even though we lost power they made a nice warm community feel for us to feel comfortable there's this really cool view and you can rent ATVs, but of course we had these really cool GS motorcycles, so we don't need any ATVs, but we rode up this long dirt road with some eh, little technical parts in it. So it was kind of fun to challenge ourselves on the bikes a little bit, but at the top, there's just this huge view. And I think we were somewhere at like 8,000 feet and I believe we were looking down towards uh, the city of Leon um, from the very top there, but just a really cool, spectacular view, uh, really just in the clouds. There goes Grandpa, all right. That's it for this video. We're hoping to have the next video about the ride to Tolentongo out in a couple of weeks. Hope to see you there. Thanks.